And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Ghostbusters The Board Game 2. This is Ghostbusters, I'm sorry, Ghostbusters 2 The Board Game. It's the second Ghostbusters game from Cryptozoic. The first one Sam reviewed. I didn't review it with him, but if I had reviewed it, I would have given it a 5. I thought the miniatures were cool, I thought the game was okay, but essentially you were just randomly going around and shooting stuff and hoping you missed it. The ghosts were moving around randomly. It was just kind of a random jumble. When I got this, there was a letter that came from it from Cryptozoic that said, hey, if you played the first one, don't think that that's going to be the way the second one is. Basically, it was a longer letter saying, this is not as bad as the first one, we promise, essentially. So let's take a look at this one. I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but give you a brief overview of how it works. thing you're going to do is you're going to be picking a scenario and so the game comes with a bunch of scenario cards they show you how to set up the map they show you what goes on that map uh, the, the spirit world or like things that can come out on the board there's there's various specialties there's different scenarios it tells you how to win how to end there might be a, a timer and you'll put a little clip on the card to keep track of that timer and you can play some of the scenarios in order so i might play the scolari brothers and then i play scenario one then scenario two then scenario three so i'm not going to be showing one of those scenarios specifically i'm just kind of demonstrating a little bit about how the game works there's different boards that you'll place out here and how whatever directions whatever it tells you so you're making a map of sorts on the board and each player is going to have one of the Ghostbuster figures and so these Ghostbuster figures will be moving around the board many times you'll be able to get in the car and drive the car around and drop things off and in a couple scenarios you can even get in the Statue of Liberty there's a two-piece thing here but you can get in the Statue of Liberty and go around and fight monsters now in this game there is a pile of monsters here's the the Ghostbusters uh, the different Ghostbusters that are in the game, and there's uh, different models depending on whether you are wearing, what kind of backpack you're wearing, and that's because there are two different types of monsters. You'll see there's the pink monsters, and there's the purple monsters, there's this big giant guy here, it's fatty here, there's even uh, the painting is, is in the game here, that's from Ghostbusters 2, and so sometimes the monsters in the game also has uh, way the monsters will have different bases in the game and so you will put the monster in that base and then that means something for that specific monster so the different kind of bases will show now I remember I talked about you have a, a proton gun and you have mood slime those are the two different things that you can have in your backpacks and you'll be doing damage to monsters and so as you do damage you're going to show which kind of damage and the proton streams work against the purple monsters and the other ones work against the pink monsters. So on a player's turn they're going to be taking some actions. They're going to be, you have three actions you can do on your turn and so you can move up the two spaces, you can drive your car up the six spaces, you can deposit ghosts that you've trapped, you can remove slime, so in case one of the Ghostbusters next to you is slime, you can remove slime, or you can switch out someone's backpack that's next to you. So you're going to be moving around the board, you're going to be sometimes jumping in the car and driving the car around, and you're going to be trying to shoot ghosts. Now the different ghosts that you have have cards on these ghosts, and it's going to show what you need to do to hit them. So this one needs a 5 or higher, this one needs a 3 or higher, then you add a, a mood slime to it, and this will tell you how many mood slimes you need to hit it to extract that type of ghost. It will tell you on the back of each card, it tells you more about how the ghost works, and it will tell you when it's hit, what it will do. So like this one, when it's hit, uh, will move one space closer to the nearest Ghostbuster. If it misses, it moves one space towards the Ghostbuster, then slimes three spaces in a random direction and three spaces in the opposite direction. Now in this game, a lot of times you're going to be moving things in a random direction. For that, you simply have this near the board. You'll roll a die, an eight-sided die, and it will show you which direction. So as you attack the ghosts, you'll be rolling here. That's obviously a miss. I rolled a one. 
If you roll the Ghostbusters symbol, then you've gotten a six. And of course, to hit a ghost, you're gonna need the right type to hit that ghost. So there's all sorts of ghosts in here. They're all gonna be moving around and they're all gonna be sliming you. And different slimes will do different things to you. When you're hit by slimes, it's possible that you will be slowed down or you have fewer movement. You're gonna be running around the board sometimes looking for goo piles, which will give you equipment and or will cause events to happen. Events, there will be a specific set of events that will be happening for each of the scenarios. And there'll be also different equipment that you can find. This equipment can help you out. You might need to find a very specific piece of equipment to be able to do something. Um, and these equipments, depending on what level you are, will help you. So if you're level three, the ecto defibrillator will be better. Now you're asking about levels probably at this point in time. So let's take a look at the different characters that are in here. So here we have Venkman and Spengler and Stance. And so each of these characters, you have these little clips here at the bottom, which you move around. And when you kill ghosts, you're gonna get a certain amount of experience as you capture them. And as you go up in levels, you'll have special abilities. Each person starts with a level one special ability and you can get all the way up to level five, where you'll get a very special piece of equipment for your character specifically. Now, this is not necessarily a campaign game. You can get these levels. Uh, you can play through three scenarios in a row and go up levels, but you're, that's basically it. And on the back, it tells you a little bit more about that Ghostbuster. So that's pretty much how the game works as in essence right now. You're going to run across big bad guys. You're going to move around. And ghosts will sometimes be on this board here, which will cause them to eventually recycle, come back in the game. There's uh, big giant plasma things. I, I found this part of the game interesting, at least from a perspective point, where on top of this... Let's see if I can get these in here right. So there's like these little slimes here, and they form together to make a bigger slime. And I fit them inside this caustic ring. It shows that that's caustic. And so if it's on this big one, when you shoot it, the small one pops off. When you shoot this, it turns into three small ones, and then you got to blow them up. Also, you can turn ghosts in many times to activate your equipment or to activate some of your special abilities. And that's a very, very brief overview of the game. And hopefully that gives you kind of an idea of how it works. Okay, so let's talk about the components. First of all, I mean, really, this is a neat model. The Statue of Liberty. I know a lot of people don't like the uh, second Ghostbusters, but the, the miniatures in this one are really cool. I've always liked the uh, movie itself. I thought Ghostbusters is a fun, Ghostbusters 2 was just fun and interesting. Um, so the miniatures are great. There is a ton of them. The boards look cool. Everything kind of looks really neat. I'm not a fan of this. This is Ghostbusters 2, the rule book. This rule book here is 29 pages long. It is so out of order. First, they give you a list of components. That's great. Then they tell you about some of the equipment things. Then they tell you about how the cards work. Then they tell you about special things, which I'm not even sure. How. Then they talk about figure bases, which is a neat thing. And they're talking about events, and I'm like, well, where's setup? This game very barely references setup. It doesn't tell you how to set up scenarios exactly. I was looking at this, looking at the scenario card, coming back here, looking at gameplay, then having to go back in a book. It was very frustrating. I thought this rule book was very just all over the place. It has all the rules in it. It's just hard to figure out where exactly they go. And it's like the set scenario and campaign stuff is listed at the end, but that's like the first thing you need to know. So, eh, that's unfortunate. Now, they said that this is different than the first one. It is, but it's not a little different. So while I rated the first one a five, I'll give this one a six because it's a little better and because you can drive the Statue of Liberty around, which is cool. Um, there's two different uh, kinds of ghosts, and so yeah, now you got to figure out which packs to use. You start with special abilities that get better, and I like all that stuff. What I don't like is that rolling at the ghosts and attacking them is chucking dice, and I don't mind chucking dice, but it's so random. It's so random when you chuck the dice. It's so random if you hit them, then they move randomly, and then you find random cards. Like in one scenario, you have to find a very specific card. If you find that the very first card you look for, great, that's an easy super scenario. If you find it like the fifth card, it's a really hard scenario. What determines that? How you shuffled the cards. So that's kind of a tough thing for me to get over the randomness. I think fans of Ghostbusters will like it. They'll get to make their quotes. They get to go around and shoot dice, but you got to go into this kind of, it's a cooperative game. 
you're working together to stop the ghosts and stop the Vigo or all these nasty ghosts. But when it comes down to each mission, very rarely will you say, team, we did that because of our skills. No, it's like, team, we won. Woo, we were lucky. And I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. Although, oddly enough, I still think that... The, I always hear this movie talked about in a bit of a negative way. Again, I, I enjoyed it, I guess, more than most people. But the there's a lot of good things. The bases for the ghosts, that's good. The different color bases, that they mean different things. So, for example, I mentioned the brown base was caustic. No, that's actually a high. Black bases are caustic. But caustic bases have caustic slime. It, it's hard to get off. And if you get three caustic slime, you lose. Amplify means that they're just a harder creature. They're plus one, plus one. And these little, uh, these colored bases are very useful. So the, your Ghostbuster itself is a colored base, so you can see that on the map. And the fact that they're purple or pink, so you know which kind of pack to use against them, that's also nice. So a lot of benefits there. The theme here is really strong. And honestly, if the, if the attacking was more interesting, I'd probably give this a seven or eight. As it is, I gotta lower it because it just feels like, hey, roll a dice, I hit. Roll a dice, I missed. And it's not like you can sit there and go, hmm, you, you come and use that cool weapon against this. No, you all kind of have the same guns, two different guns, but you all kind of have the same thing. You might want to team up on one. Sometimes the ghosts move around randomly. Sometimes they converge. It just, it feels a little messy in that way. And because this is a game that's going to appeal to people who don't play a lot of these types of games, <sighs> again, I wish there was more involved there. So this is coming across sounding like a negative review, but at the same time, there's a lot of fun in the game. You get to take actions and you know, decide what to do. Oh, I should mention that you have maneuvers, and this is one thing that's really bad that this game does. You have three actions on your turn, movement, this and this. You also have maneuvers. Maneuvers is investigating a goo pile when you're next to it, transferring ghosts to an adjacent ghost bus, or entering the, the, the vehicle. These are called maneuvers. And some things will come and they'll make you lose a maneuver or they'll make you lose an action. And I can't tell you when I was teaching this game to people how many times I had to explain you have three actions and two maneuvers. Yes, most maneuvers, most of the time you're not going to use a maneuver. So it's kind of like a free action. And this thing that made you lose a maneuver doesn't really hurt you. And this thing that made you lose an action doesn't affect your maneuvers. Such a wasted, uh, that's such a garbage mechanism. I wish they, they had taken that out. But the idea of getting the ghost, putting them in, you see, I'm kind of waffling here. It's like, this I didn't like, but this was good. But this I didn't like, but this was good. So I'm not going to keep the game. But I think if you like Ghostbusters, I really do think you'll enjoy it. So there's a, some good things about it, some not good things about it. I think the edge tilts just to the good side, but barely. Dice Tower Judgment, who am I going to call? Barely approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop.